Let's go. Watford manager Valerian Ishmael, fresh from a new contract less than a day before, brought a Watford side pack with experience to town tonight. They sat in 20th spot on only nine points, but this belied the threat they posed. In almost all stats, pressing intensity, possession, pass accuracy, they were very similar to Sunderland. The only differences are that Watford concede considerably more on target shots and subsequently have conceded more goals as well. A tight contest that we should edge then. News that we were without a key player through injury before kickoff turned out to be Alex Pritchard. Mowbray then chose to bring in Abdullah Barr on the right and deployed Patrick Roberts in the number 10 role, with license to go where he damn well pleases, because he's mint. The only other change was a positional one, switching full backs, with Hume moving to left back and Huggins moving to right back. With Hume increasingly stepping inside as a defensive midfield pivot, Tony perhaps felt it would be better to put Huggins on his favoured right foot. And with that, on a dark, damp night, we set out to see if the Hornets had any sting or not. In the side this the opening minutes saw chances for Chak Veradze, who picked up the ball and waltzed 50 yards with it. Run through the middle by Chak yeah. Veradze. He's Turn still going as well. And lays it off to Tom Ince. And then Jack Clark got a run into the box. Danny, but you've been impressed with Niall the last few games, haven't you? Yeah, he's been excellent, Niall. Grown into that role, really, hasn't he? Three, four games or so under his belt now. Here comes Job releasing Jack Clark. Clark running at Ngaki here. Gets inside the oh. area as well. Jack Clark, he's still going. He pulls one back. Oh, it's still not oh. cleared. Yeah, Jack at his best there. Goes past the man on his outside. And momentarily, it seemed like these two sides would go at each other. Just wondering what Tony's thoughts are. In terms but with both of them sitting in the midfield, there were a lack of runners breaking lines. Each side effectively were seeking to pounce on quick transitions, and largely they nullified each other out. Jack Clark a little bit heavy on his touch, and he's surrounded by blue shirts. And Watford steal it high up the pitch. This is Bayo. It's Clark who's trying to make up for his mistake. Who's back there defending? It almost wins it back. Check for Dadzi gets it. And Clark brings it away after initially losing it for Sunderland. You can see here the frustration of Dan Neal that there is no progressive pass or runners for him and he's forced to play it back. Trey Hume. The same for Huggins here and he's not pleased about it either. Yeah, I can just see Niall Huggins there asking somebody make a run for me. It opens up too much. But today's result was one that would not be decided in midfield. It would be decided in defence, both in Sunderland's and Watford's. Let me show you how. Sunderland have been taught to be proactive by Mowbray. They rarely wait. So, if Watford were going to sit in and dominate the centre and wait for turnover, then Sunderland decided instead to pursue the flanks. Out there, if we got our defenders up, there would be space. And it was our defenders who won this game. They got up the field to make that space and they shut out Watford at the back. Our back four had nearly 400 passes between them over the course of the night. The entire Watford team had only 40 more passes than the Maldini four in our back line. But he definitely made an appearance. Huggins was excellent on the side up his favoured right foot tonight. Here he released Barr with a beautiful ball down the touchline who subsequently set up Job for a strike, but Job takes too long over it in the end. Job thinks about the shot. Oh. Maybe took too long there, Danny. I think so, yeah. He had, well, he had time, didn't he, for the torch, and then he almost brought it back into the bodies. Huggins was there again moments later with a teasing ball into the box, but no one was on the end of it. Finds Niall Huggins. Huggins crosses it with his left boot. It's a teasing one. Still not clear. And he was excellent in defence, like here. An interception that he has to make. Chak oh, He's done well there, Niall Huggins. He reads it really well. It's, it's no surprise that the deadlock was broken by a defender from the flanks then. 
As Huggins receives the ball, he drives in, and Roberts makes a standard run to offer a ball down the channels. With the defender drawn, it opens up for Nile to continue his run with only the centre-half in his way. He glides past him easily and unleashes a shot like Leonidas' spear with a rocket behind it. Niall Huggins just opens up for him, strides in there on his right foot, and he nobody comes to put pressure on him. Shifts it onto his right foot. I'm not sure whether it's a, a, a toe poke or he puts his foot through it. But Pick that one out, Sonny Jim. Time is to say, get Luke in there. That man on your screen there. What a goal! Fantastic. And just before half time, we were ahead. The second half began with two subs for Watford, both on the right hand side. One to replace Ngakia, who was on a yellow against Clark. The lads were clearly given some direction at half-time from Tony because they looked a lot more lively second half. We had runners not just on the flanks but breaking the ball line in midfield. Side nicely to Trey Hume will continue his running goes down. Delhi Bashiru. Yeah, that'll be a bucket. And Danny just trying to get the fine rain that soaks you through. Fine about the one you're going for. Yeah, yeah. It is very much so. Tony Mowbray feeling that at the moment. Where's he gone? He's disappeared for a towel. Anyway. Pat Roberts stands over this one, floats one in with his ball, left ball. foot. Ballard's underneath it, it's oh. a thumping at it, but he couldn't keep it down. Yeah, delicious ball in from Patrick. It's asking for somebody to get on the end of it, and there's Dan Ballard. I think he's at the top of his jump there, can't quite get over the top of it as he would have liked. And we saw defenders constantly pushing past the ball and forcing Watford to meet them and break up their defensive formations. It's a foul against Espria. And appears to have kicked the ball away there. Well, do you know what I say? Let him get on with it. That time. The second element to our victory was the targeting of Watford's defence. They line up for corners with a full load of height and physicality across the six-yard line, and Sunderland are bottom of the league for aerials one. So tonight we played it short almost every time, in an effort to pull Watford's back line out of shape. On each occasion, a ball across the front or back a little deeper from the corner, broke the solidity of Watford's defensive line and gave us some space to attack the ball. Attack it. Yeah. We've got four or five so red close. and white striped shirts in there. And obviously make a mess of it. I think one is a centre-back, it may be Porteous, heads it onto his centre-back's back, really, doesn't he, out for the corner. Another ball deep again. ball, it's going to be another corner. Yeah, two delightful balls. Barr frequently put balls into the six-yard line behind the Watford back four, and they struggled to cope with it. For Abdullah Barr on the far side, Barr picks it up. Gets inside the box as well, puts it right into the middle. It's cut out, though, by height. Yeah, better from Abdullah Barr. Goes on the outside, doesn't he? I think sometimes he comes in too much onto his... The Hornets prove sluggish in turning around and defending anything behind them. Keep it down, it's right in front of the referee. Dan Neal, Abdullah Bar. Oh, I just needed a touch. Yeah, just too much on it. It goes for the firm side foot, doesn't it? Rather than trying to whip it across, it was give a corner. It's took a nick then. Yep. Then another corner was played across the face of the Watford back line. Take the short. Roberts. Clark's with him. And one of these. Magicians will get the ball in, it's Clark who delivers, comes out with Dan Neal. They tried to clear the box, but Bursto puts in a good ball behind them. Da 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 Abdullah. Oh. What a leap that is! It, it is it. I thought it was side netting for a moment at Abdullah Bar. Abdul I swear, that kid, pound for pound, has the biggest jump since Kevin Phillips. As well, hasn't he? And yeah, it's good from Sunderland. Decent delivery all night for me into the box, asking questions from the Watford back line. And we've been knocking on the door the last few minutes. Dan Ballard coming close, but it's Abdullah Bar who steps up and gets Sunderland second, 2 0. Yes, he enjoyed that one. Yeah, I just see one or two Watford players around the referee. I think they're asking the question for the corner. You know, obviously it took a little nick, didn't it? Off, yeah. Off Jamal Lewis and see it back really now. really contest the corner in the first place. Look, out there, just fed into and Sheesh came on for Roberts on the 70th minute mark. Yeah, he's been good tonight, Patrick. He's played 70 minutes tonight. Looks sharp at times, doesn't he? Some good touches. And almost immediately robbed the ball and was through with just the keeper to beat. Yeah. It's El Shish, he's just come on. Oh. 
He can't quite squeeze it under him, though. Yeah, Backman gets something on it, doesn't he? Takes the pace off the ball. I love this guy. I'm not sure he knows how to play a backward pass. The flashes we've seen from him, we've only seen a few yeah. minutes from him. Let's have a look. It's, it's Hoyt, years. isn't it? It's, it's not had a great game, and he just gives it straight to him. He reads it, driving forward. So Coney getting back at him. Puts Goes a low. He's just getting touching it. Though, Top his back. leg, isn't it? Yeah, takes the pace off the ball. I think referee might have just somebody booped been... Mike Dodds there, was it? Yeah, we were have a look at the replay on the screen, but I think somebody's been booked down below us. And that was pretty much the game. Watford had showed very little creativity, and we were increasingly keeping the ball away from them. Two goals down, time running out, they started to lose their temper. It's a wild challenge! It's an absolutely wild challenge! Luja pushed 09 and earned a yellow card. Gets away from Trait, does well initially. Oh, and there's the push from Luja on Luke 09. Well, he's going to go in the book for that, isn't he, I think? Well, it was all happening there. We'll have to yeah. see that back. The, f so the goalkeeper's, the goalkeeper's been, been booked. yet, yeah. and then... Luz has been booked as well. I think Luz In truth, Luke had successfully wound him up all night. Look at this, niggling at him. Oh, they've got bodies around him, but there's been a foul in there. Oh, Luz and 09 come together. Suddenly trying to oh. take the free kick early. It wasn't nowhere near where the foul was committed, though. Yeah, I suppose, just yeah. having a quick word there with Luz. A little bit of afters, yeah, but Luke... In the end, loser resorted to trying to cheat. Porteous comes across. Oh, it's gone down again there. Loser coming together with Luke 09. And he had lost it so much that he was replaced by Ishmael. Watford appealed for a penalty in desperation. Mayo gets his heading all wrong. He's shouting for something instead of continuing play. Yeah, didn't ball in. So see it back there now on your on your screens and no, never been a penalty. And then delivered the worst corner in the world. Oh. Terrible corner. All the way out the other side. With Watford losing all structure to their game, Hume decided that defence ruled so much that he would have a go at being a striker. Backman. Hume who comes all the way through his chest on that occasion. He's still up there, Hume. And when that failed, he kicked as many Watford players on the way home as he could. He steals it back <laughs> on his way back to position. Yeah, he's having a nibble at everybody on his way back in, isn't he, Trey Hugh? And then the Hornets finally blew themselves apart. Andrews, the half-time substitute for the yellow-carded Ngakia, now went one better than the man he'd replaced and earned a red for this tackle on Jack Clark. When he makes contact with Jack, he's off his feet, in the air, studs up, and cannot possibly claim to have control. I'm not sure you can complain very much about that, Red. Luke 09 joined the backline auditions for a slot at replacing Pritchard with a run-up field. Those two substitutes are finally going to get a chance to come on after warming up for pretty much the whole game. Hamir and Nasrusen. 09 brings it away. Still going. Much to the delight of the crowd. Alshish is ahead of him. So is Abdullah Bar. And then Mowbray decided enough was enough and broke up time added on with Roussin and Hamir. A word on Mason Burstow this evening. Yeah, he's worked hard again. Watford did at last have a chance at the death of the game. Yeah, those, say those three waiting for the first goal still. Oh, passing comes and doesn't get there. Watford have an opportunity here. Oh. He's put it wide even though passing was... Struggling to get back. And they got nothing from it, though, and Rig got to run out for the final minute. But that was it. Hornets die every autumn. They can't take the cold. But this one doesn't need to worry. We put it out of its misery tonight. On to an informed borough who visit the Stadium of Light at the weekend. I'll see you next time.